So there are uh, a variety of ways that we're going to move the solar thermal fluid from the collectors to the balance of system. And the very first thing that you must not ever do is use PEX to run from the solar thermal collectors to your balance of system. It's okay to use PEX to run that hot water in your storage tank to your existing hot water system after it's gone through a uh, tempering valve but we really truly do not and cannot use PEX to take that hot water from the collectors back to the balance of system. I heard a story a few years ago where a uh, gentleman was telling me about how he was designing his own system and he knew he shouldn't use PEX but he was just temporarily testing it out and so he installed PEX from that collector and we had stagnation at the collector and that hot water collected and built to the PEX and he said he could see it bulge. That PEX got so hot it physically bulged and eventually it burst. It was quite a loud crack of sound when that thing finally let loose and thankfully there was no one around in the you know, location where he had it at but he said it could have been quite a spectacular mess. So the moral of the beast is we want to run copper. There's another product on the market that's kind of an accordion stainless steel pipe which is a little more expensive but it has the added value that already installed insulation on it you just put your fittings on the end, attach it to your collector, run that stainless steel corrugated piping in through the house or wherever it needs to go and terminate it to the ends. Typical though in our installation we're going to use is a copper. There are really a two types of copper system. There's the soft copper which is generally a rolled copper and then there is the harder hard line copper. So when you buy a stick, a 10 foot stick of copper, that tends to be a little bit harder of a copper. It has a slightly thicker bit of copper in it. We can talk about later and maybe not in a video but we will get into the different types of copper and the proper sweat soldering of them but generally speaking we can use soft copper to run the lines between the tank components and to the collectors and since we want a nice possible straight line it's not a bad idea to go with the rolled copper. It looks better if you go with sticks of copper and sweat soldering them but I will show you a picture where I had a leak in a fitting and it ended up being more problem than it was worth. I got it fixed but it was a problem where I pressurized the lines and realized that one of my lines was leaking. So straight lines, there are also some rules that we will want to follow that we want to be below the decking of the roof by a certain amount, typically 18 inches, and we'd like to do as straight of lines as possible for cleanliness looks and just to generally know where the collector's inlet and outlet runs are going to be. Insulation has to be done and we'll talk about open foam versus enclosed foam insulation here in just a bit. So we're going to show you a couple images here and talk about a ground-based install of a solar thermal system. Just like we were talking about the stainless steel corrugated system, we can also bury copper pipes, but we don't want to bury them raw without any insulation or protection in them because there will be a lot of an escape of heat from them into the ground. From my install in this particular uh, location we did a solar thermal ground mount. It ended up being a better easier fit for us. We dug down 18 inches and we trenched it down and you can see then we made a nice clean a straight line to it. This is the inside of the garage that runs a straight line underneath the earth buried is the pipes that run and then we rendered concrete hammer drill and we drilled out this six inch diameter here where we're going to run through that wall and into the location of the room. What we want to do when we're setting up here is what's one form is we buy this or four inch uh, drain pipe. It was 50 foot long and what I did is uh, I ran it and I trenched it to here and then I buried three quarter inch piping inside of that. So I took some closed foam insulation that was three quarters or half inch now and then I did my two lines and then I pulled them through that uh, corrugated drain pipe to give it added protection. And what I did is before I buried it, I did a sweat solder test. So I closed, capped two ends, pressurized it, and realized it was leaking. I had to pull these two pipes out of the system, and lo and behold, I did not get a good sweat solder onto this fitting right here and I redid it and thankfully I did it before I had to go and have it all buried. So there was some good news with that. Bad news is I had to undo it but that was it. One form and this is the back page where it's all done. Well, I've got it buried 18 inches and then what you don't see is I took some aluminum foil back insulation and just wrapped it on the outer of this to reflect that heat back in. And then I took my dirt and recovered it and reburied it and that was how I ran it into my garage. So 
there's a wide variety of ways of, of doing our installs. So for ground mount stuff, it's not an uncommon process to do this. There are a few rules to be on hand here. One is the international building codes will require certain depths. I went down to a minimum of 18 inches so no one would just do a regular shovel and, and hit it. Uh, then I put it into this uh, drain pipe just to give us a uh, added protection and then on my home I have a list the building inspector will now know that I've got a line here as well so that everything is located and marked and that's really what you want to do is work with your authority of having jurisdiction to verify that everything's up to snuff and, and up to code and then later what I did is I just ran 290 straight up and I have sort of like a French drain with some gravel right here that will prohibit the water from draining into this sealed system so I used a can of great stuff and closed that end same way with the other end so this is now closed off to prohibit moisture from getting in. There are different products that are rolling out, but if you have very long runs to do, it becomes cost prohibitive in certain instances as a just opposed to running your copper lines and sweat soldering them yourself. So this will be an accompanying to the roof mount system that we saw just a few minutes ago.